Good afternoon, Europe. Good morning and uh, good evening to many of you around the world. Thank you for joining us this beautiful Saturday afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is April 1st, 2017, so be careful with all those people that are going to be doing April Fool's jokes today. One thing that's not an April Fool's is cryptocurrency is on the rise around the world. On your screen, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a quick cryptocurrency market cap roundup so you can see what is going on in the cryptoverse as we speak on April 1st, 2017. I like saying that because I, everybody's trying to get me with some kind of April Fool's today. But guys, as you can tell, right now the market cap for cryptocurrency is sitting at almost about $26 billion. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And Bitcoin right now is being uh, bought and sold at $1,069.19 per Bitcoin. Now, what does this mean for everybody, guys? Ultimately, in 2009, when Bitcoin first came out, it was valued at less than four-tenths of a penny. Then in 2010, you could still buy it for about 10 cents. Guys, literally, timing is everything when you see disruptive technologies. And many of us have been there, right? When, uh, when many of us were younger, we saw the Internet when it, it first came out. We didn't really understand it, but somebody demystified that conversation for you and I. And then we took full advantage of it. In fact, if you would have told me that my mother, who, who, that's almost in her 70s, would be sending emails from her iPad with one flick of a button, right? I tell you, you're crazy. So at the end of the day, guys, everything is evolving around us. Ecosystems are being built around these uh, cryptocurrencies, especially the alternative coins. And just as an example, guys, Ethereum has a smart contract uh, blockchain technology that is phenomenal. It's basically limitless. But I, we still remember when we're buying Ether, their coin, at 30 cents. In today's market, guys, it is being bought and sold at $51 per Ether, which is pretty valuable. Now, their market cap is almost $5 billion, guys. Again, we all know that Bitcoin's not going to go anywhere. They still have a dominance of about 70% almost of the entire cryptocurrency market. And as many of you have heard us in previous webinars, we talked about Ripple, Dash, Litecoin, Monero. Many of these coins, guys, again, started at less than a penny. And as you can tell, look at these price points, guys especially Dash. Dash is at $70.45 in uh, March of 2015. We bought it at $1.55. Litecoin's at $6.78. Monero's at $20.40. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, many of these coins are fiat currency, which means they're not backed by gold, silver, notes. They're backed by trust and supply and demand. Now, the exciting thing for many of you that are newer to cryptocurrency, we've been getting a lot of emails and messages because people are excited around the world, right? They say, hey, Max, what is Bitcoin? So I'm going to give you a brief overview and a history of Bitcoin so that you can feel more confident knowing that you still have massive timing over hundreds of millions of people to start learning and adopting not just Bitcoin, but alternative coins uh, in the cryptoverse, if you will. So Bitcoin is a form of digital currency. It's created and held electronically. Now, ladies and gentlemen, no one controls it. Bitcoins aren't printed like dollars or euros. They're produced by people and increasingly businesses running computers all around the world using software that solves mathematical problems. Now, it's the first example of a growing category of money known as cryptocurrency. Now, what makes it different from normal currencies, you may ask? So, Bitcoin can be used to buy things electronically. In that sense, it's like conventional dollars, euros, or yen, which are also traded digitally. However, Bitcoin's most important characteristic and the thing that makes it different to conventional money is that it is decentralized. No single institution controls the Bitcoin network. This puts some people at ease because it means that a large bank can't control their money. Can't. C-A-N apostrophe T. Can't. Can't. So the reason why that's exciting, guys, is because we all know one thing. When you have a central focus point like a, a central bank, right, you can get hacked. And we've seen many banks that have been hacked. Uh, governments have been hacked. Uh, militaries have been hacked. In fact, many of you have heard of Home Depot and their hack that had about 1.5 to 2 million uh, people's personal information out on the, inter in the Internet. And this is one of the main reasons why people love blockchain technology, guys. Not only is it more secure and it's more efficient, you, you don't need intermediaries uh, for products and services as far as if you're doing, uh, if you're selling products and services on the blockchain, in the future you can uh, skip the intermediary. So as an example, guys, on Ethereum's blockchain, because it is smart contract technology, we're starting to see adoption of land deeds, right? We're starting to see driver registrations, 
uh, voting records, medical records, uh, solar power purchase agreements, energy storage contractual agreements, and the list goes on and on and on, guys. Many insurance companies are looking at Ethereum's blockchain uh, to be able to offer their products and services in the future. And again, guys, all of this is occurring right underneath our noses. This revolution when it comes to blockchain technology and cryptocurrency is happening, and many of us have actually opened our eyes and started doing what? Participating, right? Because if you can get in front of a very disruptive uh, technology, guys, just like people did back in the dot-com boom, right, where people made uh, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, and some people actually made hundreds of millions of dollars, all they had over everybody was timing. Nothing else, nothing more. It's not that they were smarter than everybody. It's not that they had more money than everybody. Many of these people got involved at the very, very genesis, and they did very well. So let's talk a little more about Bitcoin. Who created Bitcoin? A software developer uh, called Satoshi Nakamoto proposed Bitcoin, which was an electronic payment system based on mathematical proof. Now, the idea was to produce a currency independent of any central authority, transferable electronically, more or less instantly, with very low transaction fees. Now, who prints it, right, guys? Because everybody always asks, hey, where do Bitcoins come from? The stork, uh, computers, robots? So, no one. This currency isn't physically printed in the shadows by a central bank, unaccountable to the population and making its own rules. Those banks can simply produce more money to cover the national debt, uh, thus devaluing their currency. Now, guys, we know one thing. In the, in the 70s, when Richard Nixon took the United States dollar, off the gold standard, obviously that started devaluing the, the United States dollar. And to this day, they uh, basically, if you go to Bloomberg or any other uh, financial news outlet, you can basically see that the dollar has lost about 96% of its value. Uh, uh, and again, uh, this is a fiat currency, right, ladies and gentlemen, because now it's not based on the gold standard. And this obviously happens a lot in other countries, Asia, Africa. Uh, I had a, a friend in Zimbabwe send me a, a hundred million dollar bill and I was like is this like from a board game or something they're like no Max literally our government has printed so much money that they devalue paper currency to this to this extent so guys when we talk about central banks remember one thing um, you know one many of them print money at will so at the end of the day uh, we have no control over that two there's no set amount of money we don't know how many uh, hundred dollar bills they're gonna print right so at the end of the day uh, that that is another problem around the world and and three guys when you're centralized and you can get hacked and people's information uh, Is liable right like you, literally if somebody hacks a bank and they have all your information guess what they're gonna do Go start a, a new identity get credit cards, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This is why many people love blockchain technology guys if somebody tried to hack the, the Bitcoin blockchain right now uh, it would cost them about 500 billion dollars every 10 minutes just to try and hack it. Because remember, guys, it's on a peer-to-peer -peer network, meaning it's not centralized like a bank, right? It's uh, a bunch of nodes around the world, uh, probably a couple hundred thousand, uh, close to a couple million already. And and the thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, is the, the beauty in that is, again, security, right? Efficiency. And then, obviously, saving your clients money and time uh, using the blockchain for future purchases. So what I tell people, guys, is that at the end of the day, we as humans evolve, right? But when we see disruptive technology, we do two things. We either adopt it or we, we basically sit back on the sidelines and let everybody else take advantage of the explosion that occurs. Uh, and we've all seen it, guys. How many of you remember uh, dial-up internet, right? When I was a kid, I still remember that sound of the modem uh, you know, connecting to the internet. And I was a kid, and I would get so excited. I thought 14.4 was, was blazing fast. And then they came out with 24.4, and I was like, woo, we are, we got turbo, right? And literally now, guys, you can download movies in like a minute. And, and so when I tell people, many of us have seen much disruption over our lifetimes. You know, and I, like when I talk to my grandparents, uh, the steam engine, credit cards, the internet, computers, mobile devices, e-commerce, the list goes on and on and on. But the one thing that I will tell you, ladies and gentlemen, is at the end of the day, what we have right now is bigger than all of it. The first internet was the internet of information. Uh, the second internet, when we talk about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology, is the internet of money.
And the reason why I say that, guys, is because at the same time, we have uh, energy deregulation occurring all around the world, and many more governments are looking at renewable sources of energy. Uh, even miners, right, that mine Bitcoin, uh, they use a, a vast amount of energy. So many of them are looking at solar PV systems, biomass, hydro, wind, you name it. This is why you are living in a time where you can really take advantage of these disruptive trends and help your family's financial future for decades to come. So let's keep going. Instead, Bitcoin is created digitally by a community of people that anyone can join. Bitcoins are mined using uh, computing power in a distributed network. This network also processes transactions made with the virtual currency, effectively making Bitcoin its own payment network. So another question, guys, that, that people ask is, so you can't turn out unlimited Bitcoins, kind of like we do with dollars, right? Or uh, kind of like Zimbabwe did with their currency. Uh, that's right. The Bitcoin protocol that rules, uh, or the rules that uh, make Bitcoin work, say that only 21 million Bitcoins can ever be created by miners. However, these coins can be divided into smaller parts. The smallest divisible amount is 100 million of a Bitcoin, and it's called a Satoshi after the founder of Bitcoin. Now, what is Bitcoin based on, ladies and gentlemen? Conventional currency has been based on gold or silver. Theoretically, you knew that if you handed over a dollar at the bank, you could get some gold back, although that didn't actually work in practice. But Bitcoin isn't based on gold, it's based on mathematics. Around the world, people are using software programs that follow a mathematical formula to produce Bitcoins. Now, the mathematical formula is freely available so that anyone can check it. The software is also open source, meaning that anyone can look at it to make sure that it does what it's supposed to. Now, what are its characteristics? Again, I love teaching people about cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin and blockchain technology, ladies and gentlemen, because in the last year alone, $2 billion of VC funding has gone into blockchain technology. We have uh, organizations like Wall Street, uh, Chase Manhattan, that are, that are looking to maximize blockchain technology in their everyday uh, workings, guys, and that's exciting. So Bitcoin has several important features that set it apart from uh, government-backed currencies. Number one, it's decentralized. The Bitcoin network isn't controlled by one central authority. Every machine that mines Bitcoin and processes transactions make up a part of the network, and the machines work together. That means that, in theory, one central authority can't tinker with monetary policy and cause a meltdown or simply decide to take people's Bitcoins away from them, as the Central European Bank decided to do in Cyprus in early 2013. And if some part of the network goes offline for some reason, the money keeps on flowing. Now, number two, it's easy to set up. Conventional banks make you jump through hoops simply to open a bank account Setting up merchant accounts for payment is another uh, it, gigantic task for many business owners, right? Uh, beset by bureaucracy. However, you can set up a Bitcoin address in seconds. No questions asked and with no fees payable. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember, only about 2.5 million people around the world have access to banking infrastructure. Uh, the reason why that's important is right now we have about 7.5 billion humans on planet Earth. So with Bitcoin and other alternative coins, as long as you've got a mobile device and an internet connection, you are good to go. So number three, it's anonymous. Well, kind of. Users can hold multiple Bitcoin addresses, and they aren't linked to names, addresses, or other personally identifying information. However, number four, it's completely transparent. Bitcoin stores details of every single transaction that ever happened in the network in a huge version a version of a general ledger called the blockchain. Now the blockchain tells all. If you have a publicly used Bitcoin address, anyone can tell you how many Bitcoins are stored at that address. They just don't know that it's yours, right? There are measures that people can take to make their activities more opaque on the Bitcoin network, though such as not using the same Bitcoin addresses consistently and not transferring lots of Bitcoin to a single address. Guys, you can hold as many Bitcoin wallets as you like. Many of them are totally free. And at the end of the day, you can even have hardware wallets uh, where you can store your Bitcoins because it's not very safe to hold all your Bitcoins uh, online. So number five, transaction fees are minuscule. Your bank may charge you a 10 euro fee for international transfers. Bitcoin doesn't. Number six, it's fast. 
You can send money anywhere and it will arrive minutes later as soon as, Bit, as, the, as soon as the Bitcoin network processes the payment. Why is this exciting, guys? Because many of us have done a bank wire in the past and we know the pain that, that takes to go into a bank, uh, get the bank wire done, and then sometimes uh, people have to wait three to seven days just to get the money, right? And then obviously we have exchange fees, uh, we have bank wire fees. Remember, banks are trying to get their money. They're not in the business of, of being very helpful to us. They want to squeeze as much money out of our pockets as possible. The beautiful thing about remittance, guys, is it's about a $600 billion a year industry. Uh, and remittance just means money, uh, sending money to other countries. Now, imagine, guys, all those people that live in Germany sending money to Canada or all those people in Australia that are sending, sending money to, let's just say, uh, Argentina. Right? No longer do they have to go into a bank, do a bank wire, uh, wait for the currency exchange, wait three to seven days, boom. When you send it from a Bitcoin address, uh, from your wallet address to another wallet address, it's pretty much instantaneous, guys. And you don't have to worry about exchange fees. You don't have to worry about bank wire fees. There's a small mining fee, but in comparison to what banks charge, it is peanuts, guys. So number seven, it's non-reputable, meaning... When your Bitcoins are sent, there's no getting them back unless the recipient returns them to you. They're gone forever. Now, so Bitcoin has a lot going on for it in theory, but how does it work in practice? Guys, the beautiful thing about Bitcoin, when we talk about how does it work in practice, remittance is something that many people already do, right? Uh, we have many family members around the world that probably work in another country. As an example, uh, you know, I have family members that, that live in Germany. Right. So those family members send money to family members in Mexico, Central America, uh, Canada, uh, the United States, uh, you know, Africa, Asia. Some of them have businesses. So when they when they use other forms of remittance like a bank, uh, they lose a, a large portion of the money they're sending, especially when they use Western Union or MoneyGram, guys, because as we know, it's not cheap to send money through Western Union or MoneyGram. Uh, they can charge anywhere from 15 to 25 percent for sending money, depending on the amount and the country you're sending it to. So this is one of the main reasons why not just citizens but business owners are really looking at uh, Bitcoin and other alternative coins as a means of remittance. Because at the end of the day, when you use Bitcoin as a, let's say that you're a business owner, right? And you're, as an example, let's just say you're selling T-shirts. Uh, in the past, if somebody bought it with a credit card, they could charge it back, right? And uh, many of us that own businesses know what a pain and hassle credit card chargebacks can be. Now, in the future, when you're using Bitcoin or XC coin or uh, Dash or, or Ripple, Monero, you name it, whatever coin you're using uh, for, for uh, merchant processing, imagine, guys, uh, there's no chargebacks. Once they send that money, uh, you know, obviously it, it goes into your wallet and it's good. It's done. No chargebacks. That's why many merchants are looking at this instead of doing Visa, MasterCard, because at the end of the day, guys, remittance it can, can literally take its toll on businesses. So this is one of the main reasons, guys, I wanted to do this uh, webinar today, is just to show you the, the power and what is going on around the world. Not just This is not just in the United Kingdom, guys. This is not just in, in Asia, Africa, uh, North America. Guys, this is all around the world, guys. People are adopting... Uh, Bitcoin and alternative coins at a viral pace and what we tell people is if you need any help setting up your Bitcoin wallets if you need any help uh, starting to figure out how to purchase and sell Bitcoin or other alternative coins that is what we're here for ladies and gentlemen you can always reach out to us directly either on whatsapp or you can hit us up on our mobile uh, 1-214-770-9699 that's 1-214-770 seven seven zero ninety six ninety nine that is our whatsapp and our mobile device directly uh, on skype we are max garza with three capital i's okay so max garza three and that's on skype ladies and gentlemen we're here to help you understand cryptocurrency we're here to help you know that you are coming in at the genesis of a very disruptive technology uh this is going to be bigger than the dot-com boom this is going to be bigger than credit card technology Ladies and gentlemen, the power is truly in your hands. We thank you for spending some time with us on this uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency webinar. We hope that we've provided value. And once again, you have our direct contact information. Find us on Facebook 
because we do grow Bitcoins on a daily basis for people around the world. My name is Max Garza III, calling out North America. I thank you once again, guys. We'll see you again next week. God bless.